Welcome back, uh, all of you, um, after uh, quite an exciting, uh, interesting uh, session uh, from with two of my colleagues uh, from INSEAD. We go to a very distinguished panel. Uh, we at INSEAD and we at the center, we are lucky to have uh, many of you, all of you, uh, saying yes when we when we ask for your collaboration. And uh, again, we are very lucky to have four very distinguished uh, directors uh, in our uh, for our next uh, forum. Uh, you have uh, you have them there, and you have just part of their very long uh, resumes. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. I'm not going to read the, the all, all the all, all the boards that, uh, that and all the roles they play. Uh, just introduce very briefly Raja Al uh very much not only but very much into into the into the, the finance um, the financial space. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Raja. Uh, Nadia, Nadia not, not in a variety of industries. And uh, remember, we were I was discussing uh, early this morning the, the importance of considering that uh, that corporate governance changes quite a lot, quite a lot depending on the on variables like the industry, for instance. Uh, Luis Nicolen, also in a variety, in a variety of boards. Uh, uh, she comes from, from Sweden, uh, from those Nordic countries we were referring before in one of the slides. Thank you, Luis. And then Su Yen Wong from, from Singapore. Um, lots of expertise in technologies, um, communications. And kind of let me just mention that uh, she's the director of the Singapore Institute of Directors, an, an organization that helps uh, in SEAD so much. So welcome uh, to the four of you uh, and for what is going to be a, a wonderful exchange of, of opinions. Uh, let, let, me, let me go one, one by one, asking first, uh, the, asking all of you the following question. Uh, first, um, Raja, please. Uh, given Given your domain of expertise, your, your, the space where you, you, you exercise your, your governance uh, practice, um, mostly uh, Middle East um, finance, if, if I summarize it a lot, uh, what do you see as the most pressing issues facing boards today? What, what, what is urgent for, for, for boards? What, what's, what is first in, the, in their minds? Uh, Raja, please. Thank you, Jose. It's my pleasure to be with all of you here today. When we look at the pressing issues for boards, really talent alignment comes as a very important point because as we evolve into technology transformation that has affected the whole world as we know it, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, things that the board members need to understand. They need to understand all of the artificial intelligence, the blockchain, all of these technologies, how do they work and how do they impact the business? And if they don't understand all of these trends, it will be very hard for them to uh, enable the decision making in areas that are um, uh, going to accelerate the growth of these businesses. Also with the uh, digital presence of all of the data, customer data, consumer data, and um, uh, regulation that are progressing right now and being created to enable uh, digital businesses and, uh, and e-commerce and exchange of data and currencies and so forth. There is a lot of risk that is associated with all of these ventures. So the board members and the boards need to understand what risks are associated with the, uh, such activities. In addition to that, information overload becomes a very important point as well because you have access to information from so many sources. You need to be able to find the right and accurate information. What does it mean in the world of information? What does it mean to me as a board member? What does it mean to the organization? And how can we connect the dots and use this information to create value for the institution that we are representing its interests? OK, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raja. This is interesting because in my uh, presentation to the, to the event, I emphasize socio-political issues. Uh, but still, there are all these new technologies that add another level of complexity of what's going on these, these days. So it's kind of, uh, again, I need this advance, uh, this adds to the, to, to the main argument. Uh, there is a new era coming up for, for boards of directors where the level of complexity they have to deal with is 
of a superior order compared to what's going on to what's going on before. So kind of before it was mostly about performance, economic performance, but now new technology, social issues, uh, etc. So 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 that that that's very interesting. And, and I didn't mention that at the beginning, and it's 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 good that that you mentioned that. So technology and risk. You also mentioned risk, and this this issue about uh, information, yeah, information overload. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Nadia. Please let me let, let, let me ask you the, you the, a similar question, but in the following sense. You, you operate in a, in a wide variety of, of, of industries. Uh, media, for instance, you are on the board of L'Express, which is a very, very distinguished uh, French uh, pu publication, and, and, uh, let me, I have, uh, and other, uh, in banking as well, okay? So, so in, in a variety. Uh, is there any common, an, any common pressing issue, or each of these industries you know so well have a different uh, challenge for directors, for boards in corporate governance? Thank you very much, and um, it's an honor to be with you. I'm very glad, and thank you very much for inviting me, Sonia and Jose Luis. Very glad, um, and I, I really look forward for the discussion with all of you. It's going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, yes, to answer your question, Jose Luis, I'm going to answer it on um, with the focus on media and banking, if you want to. But uh, before that, I'd like to mention one thing is that we have, um, we have made with Transmission Lab, which is the foundation that I created, uh, a study last year about the impact of the crisis on governance in the small and mid cap industry. In France, obviously, it has not been done outside of France, but that was interesting. And what really came up, if I want to be a little bit disruptive, is that one thing that really strikes me is that governance, is becoming a real subject for those small and mid-cap companies. And that's, uh, that's something that is very new, at least in France, compared to other uh, Anglo-US uh, companies. Governance is uh, really becoming something on which the companies can rely on and can grow with their governance. So that's the first point. The second point is that uh, it has emphasized some subjects that were already there, but were not uh, dealt with. I'm going to explain a little bit. Uh, one is definitely, as Raja mentioned, uh, I would say the digitalization of the economy. It's a huge subject. Uh, obviously, for the media, uh, they know that since the past 10 years, uh, it's key today. And it's key in other businesses as well, but it's key also on banking with all the fintech that are coming on. So digitalization, security, I have seen on some questions on the session before that people ask about what about the security, what about uh, everything around digitalization. Yes, it is a key issue for the companies and with the crisis, it has become a major issue. One other, uh, one other issue that really also was very surprising is the perennity, the perennity of the business. How will I make sure that the business will last? How does I make sure that the business will grow? Uh, how does I make sure that uh, it will grow and last for generation and generation? Just to follow on on what Martin said. Uh, even non-family companies are really relying on, I need to have a sense of long-term, not just a sense of short-term. That was uh, quite interesting. Obviously, everything around uh, ESG, social responsibility, getting a B Corp label, uh, not mentioning about la raison d'être in France, but uh, it's, it's massive and it's, um, it's also a major issue for the board of directors. And lastly, I will say that is also very new for us uh, and in all the companies I am with is uh, the, the consideration of uh, all stakeholders involved in the company, meaning the employees, meaning the suppliers, meaning the customers, meaning the partners. And there is a sense that a company cannot be developed if there is not 
a governance of, of those stakeholders and not only the shareholders. So that's, uh, that, that I would say, what, what are the real issues and the subject that really uh, are pushed towards the board of directors today. Okay, so thank you very much. So kind of governance expanding to, to companies that usually didn't at least feel the need, uh, perhaps they had the need, exactly. but didn't feel the need for that, small, medium, uh, small, medium companies. Uh, digitalization, it was mentioning, uh, so it's kind of the, this, this, uh, <clears throat> the issue of legacy, okay, of, of the survival and, and, and of, of organizations and, and, and this stakeholder, shareholder debate. By the way, this was behind many of the things I, I mentioned at the, at the very beginning. Mm. How much do we take into account what's going around the organization that are not the typical actors? In corporate yeah. governance, all, sure. all the stakeholders. So that adds again lots of complexity, lots of complexity to Absolutely. the work. Absolutely. Uh, Luis, um, um, thank you for being here. Thank you so very much. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the, the same question what caused your attention that is, is getting uh, important, is, very, is getting urgent in the situation for, for boards, given your perspective, given, given where, where you are? Thank you so very much, Luis, for being here. Thank you, Jose Luis, and thank you very much for being here today with everybody. I feel really honored to be here, and I also feel uh, that it's privileged to back up from, from my position and reflect upon these matters, which are really important. And rather to, to try to find the single most pressing, urgent issue for boards today, uh, we have had several described by Raja and Nadia, uh, we have so many pressing issues and what is described is a complexity. So I would rather perhaps lift up how do we work with these things? How do we work with governance? How do we lead companies to become agile, truly agile and resilient? How do we as a board become agile? Uh, I see this as very pressing and it's a very hard, hard transformation to to make, I think, as boards are very traditional, have had a similar setup during a long time, it's hard to think of new ways of working, of becoming truly agile. So um, I have some thoughts on it, how we have to agree on principles in organizations, what are our visions, our values, and how, what do we want to achieve? that becomes very important to involve and engage employees. I think that is also important. How do we, how do we truly do that? How do we uh, find other incentives than salary? How do we involve people? How do we get um, innovation power from companies, from every employee? And how do we fight bu bureaucracy? Because I think with all the new regulations, all new laws, all the responsibility we have at the board for one as persons, it's really, really hard to, to fight bureaucracy and become truly agile and innovative. So that are some thoughts on it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so very much. So uh, if uh, Raja, Nadia, mentioned uh, new pressures from, from the environment, to put it that way. You mentioned this, this uh, the reaction. How, how do we react? Because we have to react in a, in a quick, fast way. And now the name for that is, is Agile. And also you refer, that was also very interesting, to, to employees, to the workers. That was one of my points uh, in the presentation of, of, the, of the day, because I think this is one of the emerging issues Kind of uh, the participation of employees, how we treat them, how they participate perhaps in the decision in decision making, how do we pay attention to them uh, from 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 boards? I think that this is a, a, an issue that will be that will be perhaps as important as as gender diversity and climate change in the future. Okay, so in order to to in order to keep social peace in societies, that that, that not only that, but it's it's uh, but it's part of it. Uh, so thank you very much, Luis. Uh, Suyen, so uh, welcome to the to the panel. Uh, thank you for for helping us as uh, you always do, and the Singapore Institute of Directors uh, all, always do. W what is your perspective from from Asia? Kind of the, the, the same question, uh, and free, feel free to to answer that in in, in the ways you you, you prefer. Uh, pressing issues for boards uh, or around boards. Uh, let us know your experience. 
No, thank you for having me. And it's such a pleasure. I always learn so much from uh, everyone during sessions like this. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the conversation as well. Uh, I want to highlight um, perhaps four areas. The first, which has been touched on, is around the focus on people. And you know, here, I just want to emphasize that with the pandemic, I think it really focused the board around the notion of how do you ensure the welfare of people? Uh, you know, we, we've always said that people are important, people are biggest assets and all this sort of thing. But when you were talking about the situation where it's about health and safety, um, one of the boards that I serve on, um, literally just yesterday, um, we lost one of our senior leaders um, to COVID who passed away. So when you're in that kind of environment, it becomes a very real issue. It becomes a very tangible issue about what is the board and the company's responsibility to keeping people safe and healthy. So that's the first area that I would highlight. The second area that I think in an Asian context, we're giving um, quite a lot of attention and space to is the geopolitical dynamics. Um, you know, for, for all sorts of reasons, you know, when you think about sort of how the, 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 the chess board is moving, uh, you know, as a board, you need to really worry about things like your supply chain, worry about even how your customers are responding, uh, given the geopolitical dynamics. And that's a very um, fluid um, scene, I would say, uh, you know, everything from the dynamic between US and China, but even including things like, you know, having a business in Myanmar, and how you actually then respond in that kind of a situation in and in many respects, you know, you, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So, you know, those are very compl complex uh, situations that we've had to had to deal with, which we perhaps haven't had to do as much in the past. And the third area I would say is really around the area of sustainability, but broadly defined. So um, yes, of course, environment, but I think uh, as raised earlier, it's a much more holistic view around sustainability of the business itself, um, sustainability, um, of course, in a in a environment perspective, but also how it links into jobs and you know, different businesses will have a different priority on the different uh, sustainability de development goals. And so I see uh, a much more uh, focus on that in the past uh, six to 12 months. And the fourth area then to sort of tie all of this together is, well, given this, what does this mean for the culture of the company? Uh, because I think one of the things that has really um, come to the forefront is what type of environment do we need to have where we're able to tackle these issues um, dynamically? Um, and, uh, you know, the word that uh, Louise used earlier was agile. And absolutely, that's been something that we've been thinking about um, a great deal. And particularly in an Asian context, um, you know, many businesses, um, I think still take quite a lot of reference from a sort of traditional uh, Asian Confucian background, which then obviously permeates how you think about decision making and power distance and hierarchy and things like that. But in a dynamic where you've got technology, you've got disruption, you've got geopolitical dynamic, all of this, it just requires that we become much more flexible uh, and, and work in a much more dynamic way. So I would say these are the four areas that I would highlight. Okay, so um, thank you, thank you very much for, for all of you. It's interesting because we have kept adding uh, demands on on boards. So uh, uh, well, this is this is getting interesting. In that sense, let, let me ask uh, all of you. Um, let, let me start with with Raja to keep some some sequence here. But uh, uh, all all these pressures uh, on from uh, how do they arrive, so to speak, to to, to boards? I mean, for instance, do do you see? more activism uh, ar around you, uh, the, you, you are kind of the, the impact of the media, you, so you are, you are taking uh, reputation is a big issue, therefore you, you follow, you follow how, what, the, what the media says about, about, you, about your company, so there are all these demands, but my question is where do these demands come from, how they arrive to, to the board, it can, perhaps it's the CEO, perhaps are the executives, H how do you know that these things, uh, the board, uh, you, you know yourselves, of course, but where do you get the most pressure from? Kind of external actors, again, like the media, uh, could be the, 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 the CEO, could, 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 could be internal executives, a little bit, uh, again, and how do you manage those? How, how do these things get to the board and how do you react to, 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 in an agile way to that? Uh, Raja. 
I, th I think, the, um, uh, as I earlier mentioned, that today we are in an overwhelming state of information, and for information will come through digital and social media more than even traditional media, even uh, before you receive it uh, from the executives, because everybody have access to this information, and this information makes its way to individuals across the board. So it will definitely come from the public and will definitely come through the digital channels first, in addition to all the traditional ones. So this is my view, or at least personally, where I get the information. In some cases, it would be internal resources that are foreseeing an issue or a risk and trying to communicate it through different committees to make sure it arrives to the board, because unless it goes there, uh, the change will never, or the action will never uh, be taken. So that's with regards to receiving it, but how do you, what do you do with it is, is a bigger challenge, I would say, because um, understanding the dynamics of the board, of the uh, executive uh, management of the company, making sure that the issue, no matter how pressing it is, has to go through the proper channels, uh, needs to follow the right governance system. I am at the board. Could I be involved in these executive issues? How do I escalate them and communicate them? So it takes a little bit of time to actually structure and uh, properly communicate the issues and put an action plan for it uh, than uh, receiving the information, whether it's internally or externally. Hey, thank you so very much. Uh, Nadia, please. Yes. Thank you, um, thank you. Uh, can I just uh, uh, answer some things or at least give you some thoughts about what has been discussed previously? Please, go, go. Uh, yeah, you, because, perfect, Nadia, you, you can engage each other, you can go back, please feel free. Just, you, you, you just own the because, panel. Uh, you own I the thought panel. about it. I thought about it and um, I wanted to share with uh, Raja, Cian and, uh, and Louise, the fact that when we talk about uh, being agile, uh, as well as talking about culture of companies, uh, it is important as well, and, and because we are with INSEAD right now, it's important as well to think about uh, education and uh, training of the people and of the talent of the company. And this will also engage them to stay there, uh, to be in a constant learning curve, to be always learning something in the company, that's also something that I think um, the board should be always focused on, making sure that uh, talent in, in the company uh, will stay because they will be engaged to stay and they will constantly learn. So education for me is something that we, we should always keep in mind just uh, to come back and to, to think about that. And, um, to answer your question, Jose Luis, uh, I would add, uh, I am absolutely in agreement with Raja. It's coming, uh, it's coming from every uh, different uh, aspect, uh, social networks, information, newspapers, everywhere. But also talking about, for instance, the banking industry, uh, it's also coming from startups. I mean, startups are pushing big companies to be agile, to react. So we have to think about that as well. So startups and the way they, they move and the way they uh, disrupt the economy or business is also something that, uh, that the board should be uh, take, put attention in. Uh, Nadia, let, let me kind of build on, on the conversation. Then uh, I don't know if you, in your, in your boards, you have, uh, are boards changing, let's say in a formal way, the systems? by which they receive information and they bring that information to the agenda of boards. So do, do, do you see some evolution there? Uh, to be honest, in the boards where I serve, I don't. I don't see any, uh, any different uh, ways of uh, having the information. Although I also uh, believe that during the crisis, during the uh, C-19 um, and the crisis, we have had uh, many different ways of organizing the governance, and those ways have been much more fluid than it has been in the past. Uh, there has been some WhatsApps 
on uh, on a board uh, of uh, on the board of one of my companies, and that was not the smallest one. So uh, yes, uh, the prices have changed. Also, the way the information uh, is giving to us. Thank you. Uh, so, Luis, building on this conversation, you, you can take it uh, as you see more productive for our alumni watching us. So, I agree that we have we have a higher flow of information. So, we have a higher transparency. How do we act in the board? How do we act as individuals out in the society? It's harder to hide and be anonymous as a board member. And we also have a higher need for information, business intelligence. We have to try to stay on top of so many issues. So I think it is most relevant to, to discuss how do we get information in the best way. I mean, information that is not only data, but really, really good quality information. Another trend that would come from this is perhaps if you watch the organization and you look at it as a time glass where you have the owners and the board uh, on the top and then you have the middle of the waste with the CEO and then you have the management and the whole organization. Uh, I think that this model will not last. Uh, it will be impossible to pass all information and all um, dialogues by the CEO. Much of our tradition is this. We have to go by the CEO. We cannot just jump down in the organization and discuss with everybody. But I think it will be needed. This is also an important source of information for us up in the board to get to know individuals or hear the voices of the organization. Uh, I don't know how this will be solved, but I can already see that in some company, companies we have Jammer, for instance, where we have groups of employees discussing issues, we have the management highlighting issues, etc. And the board is um, more than welcome to, to interact. We are actually wanted to, to interact. So I, as an individual in the board, has to comment on things on Jammer. And uh, well, somehow this blends a bit how we communicate. And I think this is an interesting trend and I, we cannot stop it. We cannot regulate it the whole way. So okay. again, values and principles become very important. Is that, is that the case as well with listed companies? Because you may have a not difference there between- It's not listed, but I can see other things happening in listed companies where perhaps the CEO goes out and in some um, social media comments on things, etc., it's re really, really hard to to regulate it. And I think it's a trend that it, this is something coming, whether we want it or not. But mm -hmm. of course, it's much more regulated in listed companies. Yeah, uh, mm, a couple of comments on Luis' uh, point, and and, and then uh, Nadia is joining this this conversation. It's interesting because years ago there was a trend, at least in the U.S of uh, some boards uh, some and then but mostly the shareholders say no no we only want we only want the ceo as an internal executive on the board so it's, it should be only the ceo and all the rest should be external directors okay that that was a way uh, on paper to prevent this, the, the internal directors to have too much power on the board okay but what happened what happened because all the communication was channeled now through the CEO, this uh, the CEO even even got more power than 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 before because, he, and I think that what you mentioned, Luis, of of the board being able to reach down, okay, to 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 the organization to 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 have a direct test of the culture, a, a, a direct temperature of the of, of the uh, of the climate of the of of the workers in in the company. I think that that's a very interesting practice that will 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 see. I, I I guess that we'll see more and more of it. Because it just makes uh, makes sense, especially given these kind of added added tasks uh, that are kind of uh, being taken by, by boards. So that 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 was a very interesting point. Uh, and then I have a question about listed companies. But uh, before that, I would like to go to to Sujen. Uh, Sujen, kind of let, let's keep kind of adding to the conversation. Thank sure. you. Sure. 
Shiraj, is, um, I mean, so much has already been covered by Roger, Louise, and Nadia. I'll just add a, a, a three points. One is um, to the point around bringing in the next level of executives. We're certainly um, bringing in, not onto the board, but into the board meetings, uh, direct reports of the CEO on a very regular basis so that um, some of it is succession planning. Some of it's just trying to get to know, um, you know, the next level uh, of management, but also it's to get a variety of different voices and we don't always want it to be filtered through the CEO. So that's one. One. Um, second, um, yes, I think more dynamic discussions and more ad hoc discussions. As you can imagine, if you're dealing with a situation like Myanmar, you don't wait until the next board meeting before you have a discussion. You have a discussion as and when the situation unfolds, right? So that's the second. And the third, I would say, is uh, you know, growing focus on uh, professional development for directors as well. So you know, that that means lots of different things. But I really like the point around education. It's education for employees, but also education for the board. Uh, in different forms. And sometimes these are more sort of point seminars or sort of, you know, latest updates, whether it's regulation or what's happening in the world. Uh, timely topics like, uh, you know, linking ESG to remuneration, things like that. So just as a board trying to level up a little bit more. Okay, wonderful. So th thank you so very much. L let me just start to bring to the conversation questions from our from our participants, and any of you can jump in uh, on, on those. Uh, do you have, uh, any of you know companies, do you have direct experience of boards using uh, artificial intelligence in their data gathering and data processing and decision making? Or is it still something that we speak about it, it's coming, and we have a wonderful colleague here who is an expert on that, I think, said, uh, uh, or, or it's something that's already there? I could uh, actually take that. I would love to be able to find the tools to do that because honestly, I question sometimes the sources where all of the information that is coming to me, the information that I receive as, as a board member does not give me enough um, information. So it's data, it doesn't give me enough information to shape my decision. And honestly, in those kind of situations, I would love to experiment with a technology solution that will be able to analyze the data on my behalf and give me any patterns or any uh, commonalities between those data sets that will enable me to pinpoint the issues that might have been happening for a while. Nobody paid attention to it because it's buried between uh, loads of uh, data sets. So that is something that I, I'm very passionate about. I would love to see some tools out there in the market, but I'm really excited to hear from uh, the other panelists if any of them have used something like this and how is the experience. Uh, it, it, it looks that it's uh, still the future, given what, what, what I see from, from them kind of. Uh, okay, but, but, that, but that's interesting to know because it's, uh, it's something that is, the technology is out there, uh, it's, uh, but it's that have not reached Board of directors yet, so and it, it could add rationality to the decision making, at least on on things such as risk. I, I see that I, I I don't see artificial intelligence helping us what to do in Myanmar. Perhaps to use Su Yen's uh, point, but I, I see in the management of risk a, a huge huge potential from technologies that like uh, artificial intelligence. Let, let me ask you this question that has to do with a bit the topic of of the of the morning has to do with if the practices of boards in different industries, in, in different ownership tasks uh, is converging or, or still keeps uh, kind of uh, practices apart, uh, divergent. Uh, you mentioned, one of you mentioned listed companies. Okay, uh, do, you do you think that listed companies are more advanced in governance practices or is not necessarily the case? Uh, other companies, I'm uh, sorry, small, medium companies are learning from uh, from perhaps listed companies. H how do you see that? What is the role of listed companies? Are they at the at the uh, at the forefront of good practices, or we, we should not think that 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 way necessarily? What, what, what do you think? If Okay, I, I mentioned the list of companies, so uh, I'm going to try to answer, although I'm not serving in a listed company board, so it's going to be just a feeling and what I have read, uh, except that I have also worked at uh, IFA, which is the French uh, 
Association of Administrators use a, 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 renew, a meeting of all the administrators in listed company and non-listed company. So we worked on governance over there. I would say that uh, listed company are obviously much more regulated than non-listed companies. That's, uh, that's obvious. Uh, although I think that, for instance, family business that Morton talked about earlier, uh, family business become more and more uh, structure in terms of governance. As I said before, the, the crisis also made the small and mid caps company more aware of the fact that governance may be a help in those type of crises. So I think that I'm not sure that everyone look at the listed company as this is the growl <laughs> that you need to, uh, to reach, but, uh, and the regulation may be um, very cumbersome and create a lot of work, um, but we have that in bank. Bank uh, uh, have a lot of compliance as well. So um, I think that what it means is that governance, as I said earlier, is becoming more and more uh, a tool for the companies uh, to uh, have or to succeed, to grow, uh, to have a sustainable business and to go through the crisis. So that's what I would say in terms of uh, being a list company or not. Um, and, and, yeah, uh, Suyen, go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm happy to add uh, my two cents worth. So having served on both the listed as well as non-listed boards, I, I see um, a bit of convergence in the sense that from a listed company perspective, there tends to be, at least historically, a lot more focus on the conformance, the compliance, because you're subject to certain regulations, as uh, Nadia mentioned. Whereas for the non-listed companies, there is probably a much more focus on the other side of the coin, which is, you know, how do you focus on growth and so forth with perhaps less emphasis on the conformance. However, what we're seeing, of course, is that the, the, we're trying to change the narrative so that we don't perpetuate a view that governance is for listed companies, but really to say that governance is a function of conformance and performance. So as a listed company, yes, deal with all your compliance and conformance, but really we're thinking about how you create value. At the same time, we also do see that private companies, smaller companies, sometimes run into governance issues. And these are sometimes the ones that make the headlines. So we're equally trying to uh, ensure that smaller companies or the non-listed companies pay attention to, yes, driving value creation, but equally also the conformance side of things. So I, I would agree that there is a bit more of a, you know, the balance required actually from all types of companies across the entire spectrum. Yeah. Okay. So that 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 will be you will be in line uh, in terms of that there is some convergence of practices. So I would some. agree. Yes. We, we we keep the variety and to keep the, the variety could be national varieties and that is good. Uh, um, kind of industry varieties, but it seems that the, we go to we are converging on an essence of governance that has to do with creating value, kind of conforming with. Kind of legal requirement, but conforming also or responding at least to the pressure of, of society. Absolutely. Okay. So, so th th that that will be and it's a tricky balance. Okay. But it seems that we are going um, we are going there. Let, let me. Uh, I don't know if you have any any question yourselves. Uh, please in, interrupt me. Okay. If you want to say something at any moment, um, I have a, a question for you. Uh, in, in one of the, the kind of I keep receiving questions from from the participants. So thank you all of the participants very much. Uh, there is this word that is becoming kind of uh, fashionable, is not, you know, the word, but very influential, which is purpose, purpose. Okay, it, within this shareholder, stakeholder debate, one way, for instance, to respond to all these new things I mentioned first thing in the morning about, uh, um, about uh, kind of uh, the, the climate change, uh, social issues, equality, uh, and you have to balance that with the with the long term, the longevity. Uh, Nadia was referring to that, uh, and, and having a, a, a corporate purpose is some companies thing and, and some policy is, is is a is a way is a way to 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 to, to solve that or to, or to to advance in that direction. Um, do you see companies uh, in your experience uh, getting into into these things about elaborating a purpose 
that includes social and environmental environmental issues how formal is that is that purpose okay and how useful do you think it is uh, and so on and so forth you you perhaps the, the name is different it's not purpose could be again legacy or uh, kind of uh, having a long lasting uh, Nadia was saying that long lasting company etc et so what do you think of of that this this thing about purpose organizational purpose is getting into too much trouble is it feasible? It is going to just be some sort of lip service, uh, not not really sincere. How do you formulate that? Because again, it's 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 in the air. I mean, everybody is talking about now about uh, corporate purpose, precisely to respond to pressures from society that go beyond shareholders, that come from stakeholders. Yeah, a a a any of you, please, any of you. Okay, I could start. I mentioned vision Thank being you. important with a company. And I think that if you have a, a true purpose for a company, a purpose that comes from the owners and that is shared by the employees, you have a, you have a very good advantage. It's like you have a pole star that you can navigate against. And then you're not needing procedures or instructions in the same way. You can delegate responsibility if the purpose is clear and understood by everybody. And of course, would this also be a sustainable purpose? It's very trendy and uh, very good, uh, very good value in that. But then, as you say, we also have, it's, it's also driven by, by society that the company should have a purpose. And of course, you could have a purpose that is more something that you put up on the wall to show everybody that we have this purpose, but it's not anything that everybody's living or believing. And of course we have trends where you have sustainability reports, et cetera, that has to be written from companies and you want to say something meaningful and then you have perhaps purposes that are not generally true. Okay, okay. Uh, that, that, that used to happen years ago with the word culture as well. So they were kind of again, posters on the walls but then there is this kind of separation between the, the, the talk and the walk, okay, of, of, of companies. Uh, <clears throat> any more thoughts on that? Uh, do, do you see this as a sort of that companies will have to have a, a purpose or, or, or not, or, or perhaps they can kind of stay away from, from that? If I may add to Louise's point, purpose is really, really important in any organization, not because it only sets the direction, but it also serves as a constant reminder of what is the reason of our existence. When we try, when we get engaged with operations and growth, sometimes we deviate from our original purpose and we are venturing into other ventures and expansion plans of the business that may not be uh, connected or supporting the real purpose of our existence. So yeah. uh, I believe it's important to have this purpose not only communicated and, and uh, written on the wall, but really very simple that every individual connects with it. Uh, if everyone knows how do they contribute to the overall purpose of this organization, they will uh, be uh, dedicated. They will also be very clear on terms of what is expected of uh, them and their roles and how much their roles are important into contributing towards this uh, organization. So it keeps a constant reminder whether we are on right track or not, and also a very good direction towards the future engagements. Do we spin into this? We are a technology company. Do we spin into financials? Do we do this? Do we do that? How does it come back and serve our purpose? How are we aligned with our uh, reason of existence? Okay, thank, thank you so very much, uh, Raja. Uh, I keep getting uh, I can keep keep getting questions. Let me uh, on on, on different on different matters, uh, but which is normal given that there are so many things going on at the same time that we have kind of questions on 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 many different issues. But there is perhaps a common a common topic for that. That in a way bring together some of these new requirements um, on, 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 on companies and then on boards, uh, uh, especially on boards. Uh, do you see, given all these new things going on, okay, these new things going on, even before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and the things that we expect to come uh, to, to, to be more pressing after pressing after the pandemic? Evolution, changes, more sophisticated ways of evaluating boards, boards uh, as, as, as a whole, 
and individual directors. Do you see new practices in board evaluation and individual directors evaluation? Or, or, or if not, you, perhaps you don't see them, but you, you can see that this is important that, they, that we, we have them. Who wants to volunteer for that one? I'll go for this one. So board evaluation is very important. And the, what I have seen from the boards, whether it's listed or non-listed, we have the internal or peer evaluation. First of all, the peer evaluation uh, of other board members, and then uh, an internal institutional evaluation of the board performance. But um, uh, currently, we have new requirements from the regulators to have an independent body to come and do the um, uh, board evaluation every three years. And I think that's a uh, very good insights towards what we think we are doing versus what we should be doing. And it is a very good mechanism to access the feedback from the peers and from the uh, independent uh, consultants who are assessing how the board is performing with, uh, in regards to the operations of the organization. Okay. A a any other comment on this? Um, and, and, and go ahead, Nadia. Thank you. So sorry. Uh, the only uh, the only thing that I have experienced is uh, only an internal one, uh, but uh, and it has been very helpful in terms of uh, fluidity of discussion and communication within the board. So that was uh, internally done uh, by the company. But um, I know that they currently are thinking of doing an external assessment and it's becoming, becoming more and more a subject. So uh, yes, I think it's a, it's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. Building on, on, on this particular point, uh, and there is a very interesting question here, is that uh, do you see uh, when the boards uh, prepare their, their future, uh, they think long term about themselves. Okay, Be because boards have like two two jobs: to think about the organization and to and to think about themselves. They are, they are kind of self-organizing units, to put it that way. Um, uh, uh, do you see boards thinking about systematically about the composition? Uh, again, because there are so many new things go going on, new technologies, uh, stuff like that, uh, kind of climate change. That perhaps do we need do we need to think systematically about the profile of board members? Okay, in, in terms of people being able to cope with or to add value to boards regarding all these new things uh, coming up. Do you see a kind of uh, moves about boards kind of thinking about themselves? And what what should be our our kind of uh, list of competencies? How many we have or new generations, uh, new people that uh, kind of the millennials uh, and so on and so forth. Do you see any trend there that, that, that you have seen, that you have experienced, uh, you have seen in other companies, in other industries, or that perhaps you have experienced directly? Or, or do you think that's interesting? Uh, I could start there. I think it's super important. And you say that it's up to the board to reflect on itself. And actually, I don't know if this is the situation outside of, of uh, the, the Nordic countries, but in Sweden we have nominating committees that are elected by the shareholders. So it's actually the nominating committee that uh, performs the board evaluation and uh, that uh, comes with proposals of uh, new competences or whatever is needed on the board. Of course, in cooperation with the chairman and the board if needed. And I see a strong trend in Sweden that these nominating committees become more and more professional and their ways of working is becoming more and more standardized and, and, and better and better. So that's a clear trend. And, 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 and any, any addition to that? Any, any yeah, I'll, I'm happy Suzanne? to add to that. I think we're really trying to expand the definition of diversity when we talk about board composition. So, um, you know, of course, uh, we look at characteristics like gender and so forth, but increasingly it's really about different skill sets as well. So, you know, you need people with strong digital mindsets, you need to bring on people with human capital backgrounds, you need to bring on people who have international backgrounds um, so, uh, and different functional backgrounds. So I think when you look at board composition, there's just a lot more focus being placed on what is it that the company actually needs 
to support it? And then how do we fill those gaps, right? So I, I'm, I'm quite hopeful that that's an area where it's going to actually yeah. broaden the, the, the pool of directors um, from which one can draw on. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I really think that this is kind of a, will be a growing practice because it's, it, it's so necessary. Okay, so, uh, okay, I, I think it's, it's, um, it's time to, to, to wrap this up. Um, I, I, I'm getting very interesting kind of questions from, from, from our, our alumni. There is one that, uh, let, me, let me just mention it. Uh, it's, a, it's about the, the gap difference between, in execu between ex uh, executives and, and employees. Uh, uh, our colleague Yuri Yang kind of sent, sent us some very interesting data. It's, it's, this is, I think this is another, another future issue for, for boards. But let me just try to summarize in terms of the overall theme of the morning is that uh, we see that perhaps all these new pressures on boards or requirements from boards or other tasks for, for boards uh, will have to be responded in, in way that will that will promote some sharing from practice sh to be shared between different industries, with different nations, and so on and so forth. Be by nations, I mean business systems. So that there is some sort of convergence, convergence of corporate board practice. I think that as one of you mentioned uh, very early, uh, Nadia, it was that not just listed companies, okay, but perhaps non-listed and even reaching down, down in terms of size. To, to, to a smaller and, and, and medium company. So I, th I think that's, that's, uh, that's, um, that, that's very good. So thank you so very much for this conversation. Okay, I, uh, there, there, is, there was a lot of added value. Uh, you, 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 you brought to the table very important issues. We appreciate that so very much and we are so thankful uh, uh, to you. And, uh, and, um, you. and I hope that we are connected and, and we, we we, we stay in touch and, and for the four of you, uh, here we are. So uh, let us know how can we have help. Uh, it has been wonderful working with you. So thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank, you, thank, thank you. you all. Thank so you. let's have uh, just, we, we keep that two, three minutes late. So the next um, the next session, it's supposed to start at 11.15. Let's, let's do 11.20 sharp with 11.20 sharp. And, and, um, and, um, and we are quite very much on, on, on time. So thank you very much. I will see all of you at 11, uh, at 11.20. I just said 11.20 with um, my colleague uh, Massimo Massa. Thank you so very much. <laughs>